Nestled in a valley 75 miles north of Vancouver, British Columbia, lies the ski town of Whistler. Home to two mountains connected by an almost three mile long gondola, 37 lifts, and over 8,000 acres of skiable terrain, Whistler Blackcomb has become a ski force to reckon with. From snow in the winter to dirt in the summer, Whistler provides year-round activities for millions of outdoor enthusiasts. But the resort has recently gone through a major change. In October of 2016, the Colorado-based corporation Vail Resorts purchased Whistler Blackcomb for a whopping 1.06 billion US dollars. It was the largest single purchase in Vail Resorts history. But what does that mean for the community living here now? Patroller for Blackcomb Mountain for five years. I think most people are curious to see what's what's happening. Like from what I've heard, most people are like, "Yep, yeah, it's fine. Let's let's go ahead with it." They're curious to see these improvements. I think a lot of people don't want this to turn into Disneyland. That's for sure. That's probably a big fear that everybody has. They're, you know, they're happy with the size it is, and you can see when you drive up here and stuff, it doesn't handle much more people than what come in right now. So. That's when you're local, that sucks because you start to really feel it when, when the town swells up with people. Well, I mean, the big thing here is, is housing and, and uh, try, if you're trying to run a business, you got to pay your people well enough that they can be housed and that balance is pretty hard. So the small businesses struggle too. Like it's hard to, to find that balance. You know, my own view is Maybe not everybody can live in the valley. Maybe they end up living, you know, north or south. You know, there's a 20 minute drive north and a 30 minute drive south and you're in, in, a, you're in a town. Vail Resorts is incorporating their Epic Pass, a season pass available to all of Vail's 15 mountains, including Perisher in New South Wales, Australia. And the epic pass will be whatever the price is in the U.S. converted into Canadian dollars. And so it'll be cheaper than what currently exists in Whistler. And I think there'll be two things happen. You know, people will come out of, you know, the market here and travel to Vail and Beaver Creek and the other resorts that uh, Vail Resorts owns. There's, there's a ski area in Australia that they own. So there's potential to, if you think about January, once you get outside a new year, you know, they're all on school holidays in Australia, it's summer. And so, you know, there's potential to move people around the world uh, with, you know, the Vail Resorts Pass is quite significant. Whistler is not only known for its skiing. Allured by the culture of adrenaline that permeates the town, Mountain bikers from all over the world come to ride the mountain's downhill trails. Whistler is a place that has, gets a lot of traffic in the summer. The mountain biking here, the downhill mountain biking, is very big. Crankworks is a uh, big, very big event. Started here, um, now there's Crankworks in France, uh, and uh, in any event, I think summer is very big. I think that, that there's a lot of elements of what happens here in summer that could be transferred into Vail Resorts in terms of knowledge base, experience base. I understand a few key people left and are, are moving on and new people are coming in, so that'll be interesting. But I think on the ground, we won't really notice much differences for two or three years. I think this winter is going to run its course and then I think in terms of pricing and products and all those sort of things I'm sure they're looking at all that stuff now to figure out how it's going to work and and, and then applying that and then figuring out the, the, the communication and, and how that gets communicated out into you know the resorts that they, they own. The key thing would be that Vail's, Vail's likely involved with their community and making that 
because the, the community is kind of the backbone for the for the mountain, and those things got to be addressed. Like how are we getting all these people into the town on the weekend and getting people out of the town on the weekend, and how can people get around and get their groceries and those those type of things? And I think they would have more insight to that than any type of investor group that doesn't have the experience. So those kind of things they can bring their lessons that they learned down there and. Uh, hopefully add up here and I'm sure they have the same staffing and housing issues too. If you were saying to, say to me, who are the winners in this? I'd say anybody that's skiing, you know, because I got one pass and I can use it all those places. That's a, that's a pretty unique opportunity. And I think it's, it, it'll, it'll grow, it'll grow the business. Whistle Black Home was owned by a group of investors out of New York. They were not ski resort people. They were investment people. And the mentality is different. And Vera Resorts has, you know, been in it for a long time. You know, they bought, they started out with Vale, bought Breckenridge, bought Beaver Creek, bought Keystone, and, and had a own and operate mentality. And I think, um, you know, that's healthy. They get out of bed thinking about the business, not thinking about, can we pump this thing up and blow it out the back door, you know? Um, so, no, I, my, my sense is that they're in it for the long term. You know, Vera Resorts comes with, you know, lead in quality, lead in service, lead in price. And when you think about that, lead in quality, lead in service, lead in price. You can't lead in price if you don't have those other two pieces. And so for me, it's, you know, it's a good thing for the Valley. It's a good thing for the community. We're owned by an American company. We were owned by an American company before this one. So, you know, Canadians are a little bit, I'm a New Zealander, but I'm a Canadian citizen now. Um, but they're a little defensive. And, but I think net net, it's a, it's a, it's a good thing. With Vale's purchase of Whistler Blackcomb, will there be a rise in tourists? Will there be new additions to the mountain in future years? Can Vale bring further groundbreaking projects to the mountain that's already pushed boundaries? While we can only question what's to come in Whistler's future under Vale, the community seems to be optimistic.